Hey guys, this is Vera from Secret of the Stars and welcome back to my channel. So today we are working on another traditional piece. Uh, we're playing around with watercolors. We're actually playing around with new paints today. Um, I received three half pans of paint from my best friend. She sent them over to me when she bought some new Schminke Hordem watercolor tubes. And I mentioned when we were chatting that I've never I've never been able to play around with professional watercolors and that's, you know, simply out of... Uh, I guess I just didn't reach that point. I mean, I was happy with my Sakura Koi's and the, whatever I had, like the Kuratakes and my Reeves and the Prima. So I was kinda happy with that so I didn't go up to like the artist pro level. So having heard that, she... <laughs> squeezed out some paints into half pans and then sent them over to me to play around them in hopes to attempt to, you know, make me buy professional paints. I know what you're plotting. <laughs> but anyway, Lisa, uh, if you're watching, thanks a lot. I did enjoy using them. Um, they were quite nice to use. A little bit surprising. Some of the characteristics of the paint were pretty surprising. But nothing too intimidating for me at least. Thanks, I will see if I can send something back. Let's see what I come up with. Anyway, um, okay, another thing. We are filming with a new camera today, so it might be a little bit more wonky or grainier than usual. Usually, I, like my old videos, I shot it with my phone. So with the phone I was using recently or currently, it's a Samsung S6. I know it's old, it's outdated, but whatever, the camera is still great. Um, unfortunately, my phone, my phone's memory storage can no longer support really long hours of video footage. So, I've opted to buy a Logitech C922 camera. You can see it on the screen probably right now. I'm showing the box. Um, supposedly it's 1080p. Uh, it has it's for streaming and gaming. That's how it was marketed. Um, Unfortunately, the video is not 1080p since I'm using XSplit for free, so it's only at 720 but meh, the quality is almost the same as my phone right now, so it's probably fine. The only thing that might be weird right now is that it might be slightly out focus, because when I, I was looking at it in the preview for XSplit, it looked in focus because it was from a far off zoom, but then I was starting to edit it in Premiere. It looks slightly out of focus, I'm not completely sure. So I'll be taking the settings for that in the next couple of videos. I'll hope that you bear with me for a bit. And my mic, I will not upgrade for a little bit. I don't think I can justify that yet. <laughs> Unless I use my phone. I guess I can use my phone. Anyway. Right, so... This drawing. I didn't really have any idea or kind of will to draw. I've hit a bit of a dry spell again lately. I haven't really drawn anything for two weeks. Like yes, I did upload the Merlin and the Cal drawing, but that was two weeks ago and I haven't really drawn anything since. And technically the paints actually did manage to inspire me this time, so sometimes I have art blocks and I just can't squeeze anything out of me. And when I saw the paints, and I saw that nice lime green color, I felt like I could use it as a main color for something, as the highlight color. And I've been use I've been reading a lot of Chinese manhwa, Korean manhwas lately that are slightly on the fantasy historical drama shoujo genre. So like, you know, I'm in love with the emperor or I'm trying to be the concubine or whatever type of type of man or I don't know how I felt on this in this bit from someone who read stuff like My Hero Academia or you know like Sean and stuff like um I did read Black Clover. <laughs> I won't say anything about that. And I started reading MMO type of things so stuff like Log Horizon, uh and the reincarnation isekai type of stuff and all oh, right now i know how i got here so with this genre known as the isekai genre which is i was i died and reborn to another world genre so you know like 
somewhat like Starlight, Starlight Online and Log Horizon fit the bill. Um, and there's tons of anime right now that do deal with Isekai. Uh, so I started reading this manga, or manhwa I think. I think it's Korean. Um, this Korean manhwa that's Isekai about a lady who died and was reincarnated as a... I think she became the lover of the prince or something. <laughs> and from there, I started getting recommendations for that kind of content and I just kind of ate them up. <laughs> so now I'm, I'm in the historical fantasy. I died and I have a grudge against my past life type of battle. <laughs> and I, okay, never mind. How did I get here? Okay. So, it's, so the drawings and the color schemes of those are very light and pastel and vibrant given the setting and the fabric that they had in ancient times or what they were trying to depict as ancient times so colors like this lime green is pretty prominent in those, those drawings and for me who if you look at my sakura koi's tend to use the blues and the reds more and my greens and my browns are pretty much still solid using this green as a new thing for me and i think it was good because it did push me to step out of my comfort zone in terms of color so greens and browns really usually isn't my thing i mean if you look at my past work i'm very blue oriented or red or yellowish so it is refreshing to see this green like, even looking through my catalog of drawings this really popped out because of the green so even though it's a more chill usual piece for me, it's a bit of a step forward because of the colors. Now, regarding the Shminke watercolors itself, so they were interesting. They're professional game. Um, at first, when I started laying down the colors, I thought that oh, do I need more paint? Because it feels really, really light and faint compared to like when I use the coils. <laughs> but I went in for that second dip of paint. Whew. So, you may have noticed like the blue on her outfit, it wasn't supposed to be that dark. <laughs> so I did panic when I was putting down that color because when I put it down, it was suddenly so deep and pigmented and like, oh no, there's no way I can take it back type of thing. So I rolled with it and I started to adjust how much paint and water I mix after that. Granted, I didn't really play with the paints before doing this drawing, like, I just opened it up and then got straight to painting only because I've been so excited. I haven't really drawn again for two weeks so I was really excited to just open these up and play around with them. Um, they're really good. Like, com the amount of paint you get in one swipe, it's seriously a lot. Like, you don't see the pan that I was using right now but there is a lot of residue paint left that I could seriously use as a pigmented type of paint rather than like those more murky diluted type of colors um hmm. what else i did notice that they do bloom quite a bit especially when they are near wet paint still so i'm used to more controlled styles so they have my leaves and my sakura koi's uh, i they're very sharp and and clean Especially even if the, the water or the paper is still wet with water. Um, with these, I noticed that if it's near or if you put too much water, like the paint won't just dry up. It'll spread a little bit and cause a bit of a bloom. That's Depending on your art style, it's either good or bad. For me, I don't really like blooming, so... I guess I like more controlled styles of painting. I guess for watercolor, it's a little bit weird, but I'm not really fond of blooming. So it's a good or bad thing depending on how you paint. Well, the other thing I noticed is that when you paint but on wet with this, or wet on semi-dry paint, it almost feels like you're stepping into murky watercolor territory. So when I was layering or shading rather the green parts of her outfit with the blue, I thought that they wouldn't mix well. I thought they'd turn out muddy. But thankfully they were really nice. So another thing that deserved that really surprised me is that when they dried, it looked really crisp. 
and sharp. I mean, the only way we went, as you can see, it looks very blended in together. So that's an interesting thing for me. I guess this is one of one of those paints where we actually need to wait for them to dry instead of just going at it like for in one session, like what I did. <laughs> but overall, I do think that they are very much worth it if you are looking to dip into more professional, expensive paints. You probably won't go wrong with Schminke. Mm. I really don't have much experience or reference to back that up given that I haven't tried professional tube paints before. But, you know, just getting a feel for it, I feel like you will, you will really go a long way with just one set of tubes. Even on the half pan, I feel like I would really last a long time with those, with those pans. Unless of course you draw every day and produce like three drawings a day and using those watercolors only type of deals. I don't think I've used them up easily. Like, the Sakura coins, I'm using them like it already has a nice dip in them. And I've had them for two years. And it's not really hitting the pan yet, but I'm nearing the center for the blues and stuff. But for these, given how pigmented they are, they will last you. They will seriously last you. In terms of performance, I would compare them pretty close, uh, based on my experience of course. Um, they're pretty close to the Pimas. I'm pretty sure more experienced YouTubers or artists will have better comparisons, but given my amateur level, I would say that they perform pretty close to the Pimas given like let's say the amount of paint you need to swipe to get the payoff. In terms of layering, hmm, yeah I guess these act a little bit differently regarding how they dry. Also with the Pimas I noticed they do dry a bit more lighter than when you put them down compared to, the, to this Schminka where it does feel like they did dry down differently but they dried a bit more vibrant to me at least or it looks more crisp compared to its wet so that's an interesting to to notice I guess the next question would be, would I buy the Schminka for myself um, if I'm looking for paints? I know that these are slightly more high-end, so they are going to be pretty pricey when you buy them. Unless you are going to go more professional if you're like planning to sell your paintings or you know, you just have extra cash to spare, I guess. Yes, I would say try them out. Um, I don't really have much reference. Like, I'd say research well on them first. A lot of art YouTubers have played around and touched on the Schmincke watercolors. And a lot of YouTubers also have a lot of comparison videos comparing them to other brands. So like with Winsor Newton and stuff like that. So I would suggest researching well before buying them. But for me, they will last you a long time. And will I personally buy it? Maybe if I was looking for cheap paints, then yes, I would buy them. But right now, I'm pretty content with what I have, so I'm not really jumping to get them. Especially since, I don't know, I feel like 
I could accomplish something similar with my other paints anyway. It's just a little bit more... Like, these are light cast. My current paintings are not. Like, it's those kinds of differences na, that if you don't plan on selling them, don't really matter, I think. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Now, if you did, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel as well. I do a lot of watercolor, I do some fan art, I do digital art, all of that stuff. If you want to see more, do follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or DeviantArt, and I'll see you around.